Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is the Old Testament lesson from Isaiah 42. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. This is our text. Let us pray. Abide, O dearest Jesus, among us with your grace, that Satan may not harm us, nor we to sin give place. Abide, O dear Redeemer, among us with your word, your truth direct and keep us from error's gloomy night. Abide with your protection among us, Lord, our strength, lest world and Satan fell us and overcome at length. Abide, O faithful Savior, among us with your love. Grant steadfastness and help us to reach our home above. Amen. The snow again is falling, bringing to mind last year about this time here in this area as Ida Street drifted shut several times because of the snow blowing across the lot to our north. This year, I'm taking precautions. Before the snow started flying on a nice warm day in mid-December, I took the opportunity to put in a snow fence over there so that I would not have to keep blowing out my driveway seemingly each and every day. So I went to Tractor Supply Company and got two rolls of snow fence and cheaped out on the post. I had read on the internet that you're supposed to put them every six feet. I decided to go every ten feet. I thought six feet was overkill. On a nice warm day with the ground still thawed, I was able to get the post in and had a hundred cable ties or so to attach the fence to the post. And there it stood, a nice straight ramrod straight fence ready to take on winter. Winter arrived the next day with 30 to 40 mile an hour winds and blew it to shreds. I had a big orange flag flapping across my yard, having come loose from the ends, and all the posts that I had driven in stood there nicely, but all my cable ties had broken free. So I went out there. Man against nature. I bought new zip ties, stronger, outdoor, ready cable ties to shore it up again. I threaded through posts uh, to attach to the metal posts. I put spacers in. Uh, and in between the metal posts, I put in some wooden posts. We have no shortage of survey marker posts around here, so I drove those in and zip tied the fence to those. The wind snapped the marker post off at the ground. So I went out there again. Now I had broken shards of survey post, <clears throat> and so I got even more survey post. Again, may I point out, we have no lack of survey markers around here from last summer's construction. <clears throat> so, took out the old wood post, put in the new post, and with the shards that were left from the other post, I put in splints around the base of those other wooden posts, more zip ties, and up till this morning, the posts have held. Should they break again in the storm coming up, I have one last secret weapon, a weapon impervious to any force of nature, snow, wind, rain, or sun. Should it break again, the zip ties are gone, and the fabric will be attached to the post with duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> then the sturdiness of the post will be secure. Then the splints will hold, and we will conquer the forces of nature. As much as the forces of nature would threaten to destroy our best plans, the forces of sin, death, and the power of the devil also threaten to destroy us, to destroy our very lives, to blow us over, to weaken us, to snap us off, and to leave us flapping helplessly, ineffectively, 
in the winds of this world. Where in the world could we find a way to attach ourselves to someone or something more sturdy than ourselves? If only there was some way we could attach ourselves to the God-like powers of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, being in very nature God, came to earth to live among us, who, in his divine and human nature, upheld the law perfectly, if there is only some way we could attach ourselves to him, if there is only some way we could attach ourselves to his resurrection from the dead, if there is only some way we could attach ourselves to secure ourselves without any doubt of coming loose to his victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil that he won for us. Thank God that he has provided us with just such a thing. It is a sacrament. It is a holy act of God. It is a washing of ourselves into Jesus Christ. It is a washing that binds us into Christ's death and his resurrection. It is a baptism which binds us poor, miserable sinners, heirs of nothing more than everlasting condemnation, into the steadfast, eternal victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and everything that comes with it. This bruised reed he takes by virtue of holy baptism and binds it to something more secure that with Christ together, wrapped together in his baptism, now safely and securely, his victory now is our victory. Just as you would bind up a broken bone to a steady splint or to a cast, we are bound up with Jesus Christ in both his sufferings and death and his victory and resurrection. Now that sufferings and death part we get. That part we understand. Anybody who has made fun of you in school or for being a Christian, you understand what it means to be bound up with Christ in his suffering. Those who have watched a loved one die and take their last breath know what it is to be bound with Christ into his death. The trouble is, we have a hard time being people of sense, experiencing that being bound up into his resurrection as well. We can see what happens to a person that dies. We can't see the other side, the resurrection from the dead. That's where God gives us another gift. The gift that God gives us in our baptism is faith. Faith to receive the promises of God and to attach them to ourselves and to make them our own. In baptism, God comes and he attaches himself to us in a way that this world cannot take apart. Duct tape, for all of its magnificence, can be defeated. The work of the Holy Spirit cannot. Paul puts it very plainly and clearly in his epistle for today. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried with him, therefore, by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Christ Jesus has, in his death, taken away the sting of death which is the power of sin, according to the law. In his baptism, he joined with us in that polluted river of the Jordan River, a disgusting river with dead animal parts and mud and all kinds of sewage floating down it. That wasn't the disgusting part. It was the sins of humankind bound into Jesus at his baptism. At his baptism, he took into himself the sins of the entire world, 
and by his baptism now, he has made all waters a lavish washing away of sin. In our service of holy baptism, we have a prayer written by Martin Luther that talks about the washing power of these floods. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. That's exactly what God does for us in our baptism. He puts us into Christ, unites us with Him, and where Christ is, there is forgiveness of sins. And where there is forgiveness of sins, there is life. And where there is life, there is salvation. So we should in no wise doubt but firmly believe that in our baptism, we have Christ's victory over sin. We have Christ's victory over death. We have God's victory over the powers of the devil. United with Christ, we also hear that wonderful voice from the heavenly kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit resting on us and upholding us against all the winds of this world. You are my beloved child. In Christ, in you, I am well pleased. May this voice of our Heavenly Father echo in your ears and assure us of our place in that heavenly kingdom as we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ.